Okay, thank you everyone for joining. I know a few people are still signing on, but we're gonna go ahead and get started because we want everybody to have time enough for your mannies today. Um, thank you so much for joining Char Share It for Olive and June's At Home Manny 101. Today, we'll learn how to paint our nails like the pros because we know that going through treatment can cause some nail issues like dry cuticles, brittle, na brittle nails, and discoloration. We know that going to the salon isn't usually an option for people going through treatment. And for those of you not going through treatment, we know the salon might not be an option because of the pandemic or today's snowstorm. Um, and if you're anything like me, having your nails painted can do so much for your mood and your self-esteem. Olive and June has taught me how to paint my nails so well that I almost don't miss the salon. And their polishes, tools, and techniques are actually perfectly geared towards so many of the issues faced by women going through treatment. So pardon me for falling for a second, but getting to bring Olive and June to share, share it feels almost too exciting because they're two of my biggest loves. So before we begin, before we begin, a few housekeeping items. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be posted on Shoshirat's website along with a transcript. Participants' faces and names will not be in the recording. But if you would like to remain private today, you can turn off your video and rename yourself. There are instructions in the chat how to do that. Or you can call into the webinar as well. You may have noticed all the participants were muted on entry. Please keep yourself on mute throughout uh, today's webinar. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box, either publicly or click share, share it in the chat box to submit a private question. We will do our very best to answer all the questions and any questions not answered during the webinar will be answered uh, by email this week or in the next week. Um, we recommend that you keep your screen on speaker view so that you will be able to see Aviva's nails and techniques clearly. You can find this option in the upper right cor corner of your screen. As a reminder, Sharsherit has been providing telehealth services to the breast and ovarian cancer communities for almost 20 years, and the pandemic has not changed that. We continue to be there for each and every one of you. One of our many programs to help women and families uh, navigate the cancer experience that may be of particular interest for those on today's webinar is our Best Face Forward Kit, which comes with paraben-free makeups and lotions to help combat the cosmetic side effects of treatment. Just like painting your nails can be a mood boost, so can an eyebrow stencil and makeup that comes in the kit. As always, our support is 100% free and confidential. As we move into the webinar itself, I also want to remind you that Sharsherit is a national not-for-profit cancer support and education organization and does not provide any medical advice or perform any medical procedures. The information provided by Sharsherit is not a substitute for um, medical advice or treatment for specific medical conditions. So please don't use this information to diagnose or treat a health problem. Always seek the advice of your physician or qualified healthcare provider with any questions that you might have uh, regarding a medical condition. Okay, let's get to it. We're so lucky to have Hana and Aviva of Olive and June with us today. Hana is Olive and June's Director of Customer Care, and Aviva is an amazing graphic designer who has designed a lot for Olive and June and teaches many of their Manny Masterclasses. As they talk, I'll share a few tidbits here and there about nail health during and after treatment. Awesome. Oh, and I see we're celebrating a birthday today. Happy birthday, Rebecca. <laughs> All right, so I am going to flip my screen. All right, and today we're gonna be using our um, at-home Manny system. So it has all the tools you need to get a perfect salon quality Manny at home. And we'll talk through every tool that Aviva uses, just so when, if you have your system or if you have tools that are similar to it at home, you can take notes and make sure that you are getting the best Manny that you can. So we start with shaping. Um, we use a flat edge clipper. Sometimes the clippers that you find at like a Walgreens or a CVS have that curve to it. So that's really great if that's the exact shape that you want. But if you have square nails or if you want more of an oval or an almond shape, it's kind of hard to obtain that with um, a clipper that already has a shape to it. So ours is flat and it's smaller. It gives you a lot more control. And Aviva is just taking off very like microscopic clips with that clipper. Um, you can use it to take off a lot of length if you want to, but really we just like you guys to start really slow and small because you can always take off more. Obviously you can't put more back on. 
And especially uh, if your nails are having issues due to treatment, cutting them short or, you know, keeping them trimmed is really helpful because imperfections show up less in short nails. Yes. And you can see too, Aviva has a really beautiful mani that I'm obsessed with right now on, mm -hmm. but we do regardless, always shape with our old polish on. So it's okay if you have bare nails for today, but next week when you're painting and you get on a regular cadence, just make sure that um, you shape with that old mani still on without removing it before shaping. Cause it gives you kind of a um, intro into what the final mani will look like and helps you focus more on your overall shape versus the evenness of the whites of your nails, which can sometimes differ by nail. They grow at different rates. Yeah, this was a huge, huge shift for me because mm -hmm. my nail beds are a little crooked. And mm -hmm. um, I always, whenever I went into the salon, I had to explain that because sometimes I would walk out with crooked nails. And um, so this was a huge, huge game changer for me. <laughs> yes, it I makes usually it have difference. one hand of polish on and the other to not, because this is the hand that like I'll take pictures with. <laughs> <laughs> if you're wondering why I only have one hand of polish, um, I recorded a tutorial just on this hand. Sometimes you only need just one hand of polish. And just like Aviva's doing, looking at it and pausing and um, going at different angles is really helpful. So you're not just always looking from the top down. Um, it's really easy to see the sides of your nails and make sure you got everything even when you kind of close your fist and bring it closer to your face. So come up for air as often as you need, especially as you're starting out. We got a great question in the chat that I know we're going to get to when we start polishing, but um, uh, Robin asked, any tips for using your non-dominant hand? Mm. Yes. Go very slowly. Um, shaping takes the longest amount of time and you just want to make sure that in this part, you don't have any distractions. So our box is made to hold your cell phone. If you want to FaceTime someone, watch a video, listen to a podcast or music, but during shaping, when you're just starting out, especially with your non-dominant hand, you want to be completely focused with zero distractions and just go really, really slowly and make sure like we showed you're um, looking at it from different angles, just to make sure your hand isn't blocking out something important like the sides. We do one hand during these classes because if we were shaping both hands and going as slowly as we recommend, this would be a very long class. <laughs> Three hour class. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We got another question about why not use the file to shape? We will, it's the next step. Um, so now Aviva is done clipping. We clip 90% of the shape and now we use the file for the remaining 10%. Um, the file is gonna be very slow and methodical and go in one direction at a time. This uh, prevents you from kind of stripping and peeling your nails. When you go back and forth in a saw-like motion really quickly, you're weakening your nail and um, actually causing more peeling and damage to it. So Aviva is going slowly and she's going in one direction, which is really just perfecting the shape that she created with the clipper without damaging her nails. Right. And if and you're this, using, oh, go sorry. ahead. This, this is so perfect for people who are having brittle nails due to chemo treatment um, or other treatments because they're already brittle. And so uh, this again was a huge game changer for me learning to go in one direction and slowly with the file because what do we typically do with the file? Go really mm -hmm. hard, you know? And so starting with the clipper and then moving to the file is, is really good for people with uh, brittle nails. And Tina totally. has said in the chat, these are the best clippers I've ever used. So I love that. Oh, that's so great. And then we have another question. Um, I had to step away, but how do you cut your nails for a square shape? Do you have any? Um, yeah, so that? the file is a straight edge. So it makes um, a square a lot easier, but you would essentially go in with um, one clip like Aviva is showing that she would, but she won't. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then use the file um, to continue to kind of shorten it down a little bit and then also get the sides. Your file is a dual grit. So when you're using it um, at home, the ampersand side is softer. It's for your manis and for shaping. The all of your mani side is a little more tough and coarse. That's for your petties or if you want to remove nail art, stickers, um, gel before you soak it in acetone or anything or like glitter. that. Yeah, glitter, exactly. You'll see That's I have it. some glitter residue on <laughs> You would use that side. 
Yeah. So I also got a question about um, buffing the nail, which I know we will get to in just a minute after we take the polish off. So yes, Alicia, hold tight and we will get to that in just a minute. And the shape I'm doing right now is more of like an oval rounded shape. So um, I like to pull back the skin and just kind of get in there to make it as like more as elongated as possible. And then round it off at the top so that there's no like straight edges. Round is a really good shape um, for like if you don't want it to chip as quickly because there's mm -hmm. not any sharp edges to get caught in like your sweater, for example, or anything like that. I totally agree. And I think that's also something that's a really good tip for those going through treatment because I was a square with rounded edge nail for life, I thought. And then when I started to get really obsessed with Olive and June, all the pictures <laughs> are really a lot more of that rounded or almond or oval shape. Um, and it's funny because now we know that uh, Olive and June's um, uh, leader founder um, has now switched to square. So I feel yes. like my brain is kind of breaking a little bit, but um, I agree. I used to break nails all the time. And si since I switched to the rounded shape, it makes such a big difference. So mm -hmm. I know when, if your nails are more likely to break due to treatment, then switching to a rounded shape, even if you're used to a square shape might be a really great um, option. So yes, we're already getting questions about cuticles, which is a huge issue for those going through treatment as well. And we will get to cuticles, I promise, Batya. Mm -hmm. um, and um, is there a better angle to use when you have really short nails? Yes and no. Um, so you can see when Aviva is filing, she goes at it from an angle instead of um, kind of coming at it from the top as much. When you go from the angle, you're gonna get less of your skin and really kind of just position it in between your nail and the skin um, before you file versus trying to get the top part of it so much. Um, the sides are the part that's usually forgotten during filing, but they make a big difference overall, especially if you have short nails. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we got a question about, is it healthy or not to use polish? And there's a lot of, um, you know, kind of questions about that when I was doing research on, you know, all the different um, nail changes that come up with treatment. Um, and, you know, the number one goal is, um, you know, um, to, to be as healthy as possible, right? And to help your nails as much as possible. So non-toxic polish, like the polish from Olive and June, which is um, is it six free or seven free? I can't remember. We're seven free, seven which means free. that our formula doesn't have the top seven most common toxic ingredients usually found in nail polish. We're also a vegan formula and cruelty free. So it's extremely gentle. Our nail polish remover pot that Aviva will use next to remove her um, older Manny is acetone free. So it's also a more gentle formula. As you're starting off at home, we really wanted to create something that wasn't going to be very toxic on your nails or unhealthy to be around so frequently. So as you're learning and you're messing up, you can dip as frequently as you need to in this nail polish remover pot and it won't strip your nails of any health. Um, and, and our polish as well, it lasts a really long time, but it won't cause any type of nail damage. Right. And that's huge for people going through treatment. The number one thing was no acetone, no acetone, no acetone. Um, also, Olive and June does have um, Flora Complex in um, their EC color, which is um, really good for, you know, giving you that healthy um, nutrients in, in your nails to help them, um, you know, get, get a little healthier. Um, so um, there you can EC. see. Yes. I've really gone through <laughs> this a lot. I <laughs> always use this when I feel like my nails are brittle. Um, this is also a great tip for putting underneath any sort of polish that might stain your nails or even just as a base coat, even mm -hmm. though Olive and June does have base coat built in. But this is, I even wear this plain, I use it as a base for my nail art. This is the best. Yeah. So that if you're, if you're worried about putting polish on, that's a really great option. Um, but also if all you want to do is buff your nails and not put polish on, that's, that's a great option mm -hmm. for anybody who's, you know, just wanting to be as, as natural as possible. Um, it's so like no makeup, questions. makeup. What was that? It's like no makeup, makeup. 
Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That, a couple of people are asking, the color is called EC. Mm -hmm. um, and there we go, Melissa, just put it in the chat. Thank you, Melissa. So now yeah. Aviva is going to dip her nails into the nail polish remover pot. Um, you don't wanna use a pumping motion. You just wanna either spin the bottle or spin your hand back and forth because it is a sponge. So just to have it last as long as possible, you don't wanna rip it with your nails. Um, it is acetone free, like we talked about and super gentle, but very effective at removing your polish. And we put it in this jar. So as you're learning at home, you don't need to worry about messing up your other nails with cotton balls soaked in remover, um, because we're going to make mistakes this way you have total control. So if you just mess up one nail, you can just dip it in and start over and it's no problem. It takes a couple seconds. Um, somebody's asking about the two sides of the file. Which is yeah, so the ampersand side is the softer side. You can feel it with your finger. And then the other side is coarser, and that's for your petties. So ampersand side is for manis. It's softer. And then we've gotten a couple questions about um, if your nail splits, um, you know, how to, you, you know, cut and file without causing more splitting. Um, do you have any tips for that? If it's a one-time split situation, then we would recommend just gently buffing it with our buffer, painting with EC and top coat and kind of sitting tight until it gets better. But if this is kind of a repetitive thing that's happening, we would recommend getting it checked out with the dermatologist and make sure there's no type of allergic reaction or situation happening that's causing that. Absolutely. And that can also sometimes be exacerbated by treatment. So you can also mention that to your chemo nurse or your doctors or anybody on your treatment team, and they might have some, some ideas for that as well. So now Aviva's nails are um, prepped and ready for cuticle care. So one thing that's not in our box is a cuticle pusher or cutter. And that's because um, if you lose control or if you get distracted by just a second when using one of those tools, you can really cut yourself and cause infections. Um, but you have a lot more control when you're using your thumbnail and we all have one. So it's the perfect tool to use for this. So once a week, um, we recommend pushing your cuticles back. Uh, Viva is not applying a ton of pressure here, just going slowly and using her thumbnail to push the cuticle back towards the base of her nail bed. And this is really gonna train your cuticles how you want them to grow. And if you keep up with this um, over time, you'll see that you really have to do it less frequently. And when you do it, there's a lot less to push back. At first, you'll see that there's a lot of white kind of puffy residue at the bottom of your nail and we'll address it in just a second. Um, but as you keep up with it, like Aviva obviously does because she teaches these classes three times a week for us, then there's really not a lot to push back. Right. And we did have a question about um, when we get to cuticles, um, what can we heal the splits um, if we have some in, in our cuticles? So um, we will definitely get to that at the end. So stay yes. tuned, Diane. Um, and so now, yeah, now the, now the buffer, which really is a big game changer for me. <laughs> yes, so Aviva will now come in with her buffer. It's the same grit on all sides. And she's just going in a gentle circular motion on her nail bed, but really focusing on that puffy skin that she just pushed back at the base of her nail. This is kind of like your magic eraser for any cuticles that you missed with your thumbnail. And it's really just smoothing out your nail bed and getting it prepped and ready for polish. And if you have peeling at the tips of your nails, you can go in a downward motion, um, never up because that will actually exacerbate it. But if you go down, it will help prevent the peeling from increasing. Um, and when using this tool, you just want to apply very gentle pressure and not stay in the same location for too long because it, it is a gentle buffer. But if you kind of over buff, you'll feel that sensitivity in your nail bed, which you want to avoid. And especially if you're going through treatment, we got some questions about hangnails. Um, mm -hmm. I know the cuticle serum that we get to at the end also helps with those. I've definitely noticed fewer in my nails since I started using it. Um, but how do you, um, you know, uh, deal, deal with those? So you want to use your clipper to clip off any part that's um, hanging off. If you have to pull at it or tug at it, it's not ready. Um, so you would just want to hydrate and moisturize your hands. But like Aviva showing anything that's ready to come off and kind of sticking up and can be easily grabbed by the clipper, you can use your clipper to clip it off. Yes. And this is also really um, the, the cuticle kind of like philosophy that Olive and June has is perfect for those going through treatment because that's a really um, big 
possibility for infection. If you're clipping your cuticles, um, those, you know, can create open wounds. And so doing it this way, um, you know, buffing that off and, and things like that um, can really help. Exactly. We also got a question about um, who to contact if they have a question about their order. Just email hello at oliveandjune.com. That's our customer care team. That's my whole team. And we will get back to you in one to two days. Thank you. Of course. Um, so now Aviva is just kind of going over any last um, portions of her nail that needs smoothing. If you realize that you have some kind of floaty hair-like um, pieces at the tip of your nail from the file, you can use this to smooth them over. And this is a part of the mani where you're looking at your hands and there's residue and kind of build up on it and you really wanna go wash your hands, but this is a totally dry mani. The main reason is that water causes your nail beds to expand. And when you paint on an expanded nail bed, you have excess polish on it. So eventually when it constricts back to its normal size, that polish will chip off you'll be upset because you spent, you know, an hour investing in this perfect mani and now it's chipped after a couple days. Um, so even though there is a lot of dust and residue on your hands, we're not gonna wash them. Instead, you're gonna grab your nail polish remover pot again, making sure that you close it in between each step, even though we do reach for it a couple times during this mani because it can evaporate since it's acetone free. And you're just gonna give each finger a little spin through again, which will remove that residue and get you ready to paint. Absolutely. And we had one question um, about the nail buffer. Um, and uh, it sounds like Tina's a little confused about the nail buffer and asked if we uh, should stay off the top of the nail. No, um, you can use the buffer on your nail bed and use it at the tips if you have peeling. Um, it just needs a couple seconds on the nail though. So if you think that you, you can overdo it if you stay in one section for too long. So at first just do um, little circles, couple seconds per nail and that's all you need. Perfect. So now Aviva will just do this little extra credit step. She'll dip her cleanup brush into the nail polish remover pot and just give her nails and underneath her nails one quick once over, um, really prepping them and making sure everything is off. After you do this step, you don't wanna to touch your face or your hair or your clothes or your snack or anything like that because there is oil everywhere. And you want to make sure that there is um, no barrier in between your nail and polish that it really can adhere to that and stay on for a long time. Um, Judith asked, doesn't it get dirty in that pot? <laughs> it doesn't. Aviva, how often do you paint? Three times a week? Um, sometimes more. Yeah. Um, no, it's, we recommend um, changing out your pot every two to three months, but you won't notice any type of residue in there. It's very minimal. Yeah, I switch off between like two to three. I have one for like my glitters. Um, I have one for my dark colors and then one for my like neutrals and lights. It might seem excessive, but it's like the best way to prolong the life of any of your remover pots. Mm -hmm. For someone who doesn't, you know, paint my nails three times a week, one one at a time usually works well enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> no, you're you're living the dream. I think is really what it is. <laughs> I like to experiment a lot. Yeah, we have another question um, about any hints to prevent longer nails from cracking below the nail line um, because cutting it shorter is not possible until it grows out past the um, past the quick. Um, I, I mean, again, it would go back to if this is just a one-time thing that happened um, and it cracked and it broke, then we would recommend trimming it shorter and just doing a lot of hydration, cuticle care, um, a shaping and kind of giving it a week or two to reset. But if you're noticing that it's happening over and over again, um, it is also that our nails kind of have a happy length. So even if we would prefer them to be longer, they can get weaker if we grow them too long. Um, and they'll tell you that. So you can kind of feel their strength. And then if they grow a little bit longer and you're pressing against them and they kind of bounce back a little bit, they're too long and they're just too weak to hold on to that length. So make sure you're kind of finding that, engaging it and keeping them at their maximum length. Otherwise they'll break and it will be pretty painful. Okay. Um, okay, so now Aviva has prepped her nails and she is ready to paint. 
So all of in June figured that the most um, common problem when painting your nails at home was painting with your non-dominant hand, which is why we invented the poppy. So all of our polish has an over cap. You just pop it off. It's not a twist. It pops off and it reveals the inner cap underneath it. And that is what poppy is going to hold on to. So we like to line up our poppy with the wider side of our brush because our brush is designed, it's pretty wide and it's flat. It does a lot of the work for you and allows you to paint in as few strokes as possible, which is awesome. So you'll find that wider side of the brush, line up your poppy, it has an ampersand on it. You'll just line that up with the wider side of the brush and allow a little bit of that white inner cap to poke through the bottom. If you push it on too fast and too hard, it will eat that inner cap because Poppy wasn't just designed to fit on Olive and June. It's designed to fit on Essie, OPI, Deborah Lippman, anything that's in your cabinet already. Um, and how we like to polish too is to load up one side of the brush with polish and keep the other side bare. And why do you recommend never shaking the polish bottle? We don't shake the polish bottle because it causes bubbles. If you want to warm it up in your hands, you can just gently roll it. So now for our first coat, this is our biggest tip. We start in the center of our nail and allow the brush to fan out, pulling down towards the base and then pulling up. This gives you a lot of visibility into the bottom of your nail because you'll notice when you go to a salon, um, they'll always make sure that you don't have kind of a pool of polish at the base of your nail that's called, uh, that's called flooding your cuticle and it's caused by just having too much polish at the very base of your nail, it has nowhere to go. So this way by starting in the center, you have a lot more visibility and control when it comes to the base of your nail. And you don't want to get to a fully opaque um, coat on your first coat. It will take forever to dry and it will bubble. So we can see Aviva's nail bed through this first coat and it's really streaky. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. And we chose winter white today in honor of all of our colleagues in New Jersey who are having their first snowstorm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> So she wipes one side of the polish onto the bottle. It might take you a little bit of time to figure out how much polish is needed per nail. That's a normal learning curve. Um, and then we do one down the middle and then we grab the sides. And again, really allowing that brush to fan out and do most of the work for you because polish can have a little bit of an attitude when it's being maneuvered too much um, and can get kind of gloopy. So by just doing it in two to three, for strokes per nail, you're preventing a lot of that buildup. Diane asked, could you repeat please how the cover revealed what you are using? I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. So our polish has an over cap. You just pop it off underneath and it has its inner cap. And then you'll um, put poppy on underneath that. So let me grab my poppy through behind me. Okay. And yes, um, someone asked if this is their brand of nail polish. Yes, this is Olive and June mm -hmm. HD. So you find the wide side of the brush. This is the skinny side. It's like almost not visible if um, you're looking at it from the side, the wider side. And then once you find that wider side, Then you'll just put Poppy on it, having a little bit of the inner cap poke through and you're ready to paint because it fits really comfortably in your hand like you would hold a pencil. And usually we ask for five to 10 minutes in between each coat. Our polish is thicker than most since it has the base coat formulated in it. Um, but because we're doing a master class right now and we only have you guys for a certain amount of time, we go a little bit more quickly. You can clean up in between coats like Aviva's doing now with your cleanup brush. So anything that got on the sides of your nail, you can go ahead and clean it up or you can save it to the end. It's kind of your preference. Um, and then we'll begin the second coat. This kind of cleaning up in between each coat just kind of forces me to wait um, to let the polish dry as much as possible. Um, yes. Even though I go back in and clean up after the second coat too, it's just my little extra thing and it's fun for me. 
And make sure just like you did with your nail polish remover pot that your bottle of polish is sealed pretty tightly when you're waiting in between coats since it's obviously designed to dry with air exposure. Um, we don't want it to over dry when it's in the bottle. Someone asked if there are directions for the poppy. I know you've explained it, um, but I think there. are Oh yeah, and how, how do you line up the poppy? So let's, let's just explain it one more time. <laughs> sure. Um, so you'll pop off the over cap, which reveals the inner cap. Um, and then you'll take the polish brush out and find the wide side of the brush. And then you'll gently place it back into the bottle and just hold on to the cap so you remember that side. Come in with the flat side of poppy and wiggle it on back and forth, leaving a little bit of the white inner cap poking through. And then you take it out and it's lined up if it's comfortably in your hand and you can paint with it. In between coats, you can twist it back on tightly and come back and use it again. And then when you're done, it just pops off. I won't tell uh, any names, but one of my colleagues at Charcheret, who I turned on to Olive in June, once put her poppy a little too far down, uh, didn't leave that white part out. So she learned that the hard way, but she eventually was able to get it out. Yes. Uh, but you all were very nice and said, you know, if you really can't get it out, we'll send you a new one. <laughs> but <laughs> she was able to get it out and didn't need it. Didn't Good, need I'm glad. <laughs> um, so now Aviva's coming in with her second coat and we don't start in the center of our nail for the second coat because they've already laid the foundation. So we do start at the base of our nail and come up. Um, and depending on what shade you're using, maybe this coat will be opaque and maybe you need to do a third coat. You can do as many coats as you want to of olive and June polish. You just want them to be thin. If you feel like the polish is taking forever to dry, it's because the coat is too thick. And we'd recommend at that point dipping in the nail polish remover pot and starting over. We also got a question about, would you recommend doing one hand at a time? Um, it's up to you. We have some people that teach our master classes that do a full right hand and then take a break and go on to the left hand. Um, when I'm usually doing it, I do both at the same time. And I think Aviva, you do too, for the most part, um, yeah. when you're not teaching. Yeah. And how long does polish usually last before you should throw it out? And how do you know when it's time to throw it out? Polish will tell you when it's ready to be thrown out. Um, if it's unopened, it will last forever. But if you're opening it and using it, um, it kind of depends on how frequently you're using that shade, if you kept it open while you were um, allowing it to dry. But it will just feel very thick and kind of gummy when you pull it, the polish um, brush out. It might even be a little sticky and then you'll know it's time for a replacement. We sell all of our polish a la carte on our site for $8. So it's always super easy to get anyone. And it's also sold at Target. Yeah. I love passing by the Olive and June section at Target. Do I always clean it up. <laughs> I actually need a new white, so today is perfect for that anyways. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of on my last leg of it. I need a third coat, so I'm just going to wait a little bit and clean up again anything, and then I'll do like a third last like thin coat just to like make it fully opaque. White can be tricky if you're painting white with me today or if you have ever painted white. White can be tricky like um because you really the important part is to do thin coats and then you can just build it up as much as you want. And we are dipping the cleanup brush in the nail polish remover pot um to clean up in between. And you want to be careful to like lower it in slowly to not get the bristles all. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, I see, can the nail polish be preserved for a long time? Uh, for a long time, in other words, will it ever expire? So yes, you know, when it, when it starts to get thick as um, mm -hmm. Anna was saying. And keeping it closed in between coats, I know has been uh, a lesson I learned from you all that's really, really <laughs> helped. And how do you know when to start coat two? Um, you'll want to wait five to 10 minutes in between coats. Um, if it's a more sheer color or a lighter color, then five minutes is fine. If it's a really dark red or a black, purple, burgundy, that type of color, um, it has more pigment in it. So you'll want to wait closer to the 10 minute mark. 
So now Aviva is doing her third and final coat of HD, our winter white. Um, and again, does it the same way as she did her second coat, starting at the base and doing it in as few strokes as possible. And um, we were also asked, how long will this last before chipping off? I have to share, I did my Hanukkah ombre mani myself, uh, you know, on the first night of Hanukkah and I don't have one chip. Um, <laughs> and I've learned from Olive in June that um, adding a top coat, uh, you know, to your practice every few days can really help extend the life of any manicure and make it shiny again. Um, but I haven't done that and it still looks really great in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, chipping, it kind of depends on your prep. Um, if you follow all of these steps and you, yeah, are just kind of paying attention and, and carving out the 45 minutes to an hour for your weekly mani, you'll see that it, it lasts a really long time, usually five days or more without chipping. Um, but if you skip a step, if you wash your hands, if you don't wait, you know, the full five to 10 minutes in between coats, you'll see that it doesn't last as long. So it's kind of the effort that you put in will be the results that you get out of it. Absolutely. And we got a couple questions about how long does it usually take to completely dry? Depends on the color and your thickness that you painted. Um, but usually about 20, 25 minutes until you can do something like change your clothes, put your hair up in a bun, stuff like that. But I will say the new dry drops mm -hmm. changed my life. And I can now do a mani at night without worrying that I'm going to totally mess it up when I get ready for bed. <laughs> Absolutely. But a really good tip if you're doing your nails um, at night and you don't, you know, sometimes if you go to sleep with like a mani that's not completely dry or you think it's dry and it's not, don't top coat if you know you're going to go to sleep soon. And then just do top coat in the morning and it will smooth out like any sort of sheet creases you might get from overnight. Right. And someone else is asking what is the difference between the two nail polish remover pots on the website? We have one that's just for manis, um, and then we have one that can also be used for petties. It has a sponge at the top of it, um, so you can just use that so you're not trying to dip your toes into this pot. That would be really funny. I know. I was very excited when that came out because before to do my toes, I was sticking a cotton swab into my nail polish remover pot and like shaking it up to get the yes. cotton swab uh, oh all saturated. <laughs> um, and um, Robin asked if these are instructions are available online. Yeah. And we also host master classes three times a week um, with a schedule on our site, but we have tons of YouTube videos tons of videos on our Instagram and Facebook page as well. Um, so now Aviva will come in with her top coat. You can use Poppy on your top coat if you want to, but since it's clear, it's not super necessary. You just wanna do a thin coat. If you do something too thick, um, you'll see bubbles again with your, with your polish. So just coming in with a thin coat and covering um, her entire nail with this top coat it makes it really glassy and kind of look like a gel finish. And we recommend top coating every two to three days. Um, this really seals in your mani, keeps it really shiny and helps prevent chipping as well. Getting some more questions. Um, I love this question, but I don't think you're gonna tell us any answers. Uh, I think we're gonna have to wait for the next uh, line to drop, but what are the spring 2021 nail colors? Uh, trends that you anticipate? <laughs> oh, good question. Um, Aviva and I are actually sworn to secrecy on stuff like that, but um, if you don't follow us on social media, definitely do because we drop a lot of hints there and our founder is unable to keep a secret. So <laughs> as much as we have to keep one, she cannot. So if you, if you watch uh, their Instagram lives, um, when Sarah Gibson Tuttle does them, um, she definitely drops, drops some hints. Yes. Um, and are there different kits with different products inside? Mm -hmm. So we have our Manny system, um, which is all the tools you need. You can get it with one polish or you can get it with six polishes. We have our Petty system and then we have our complete system, which is both Manny and Petty. Right. And um, Maureen asked um, if she's touching up with oil or removing re mistakes with the polish remover. And she is dipping that um, 
cleanup brush into the polish remover pot. So yes. um, cleaning up any mistakes um, with that. Yes, um, so now Aviva will come in with her dry drops. These are not a part of the system because maybe you feel like you don't necessarily need them, but they are available for purchase on our site separately. Just one to two drops per nail, depending on how large your nail beds are. Um, and this will make her polish dry to the touch in 80 seconds. It doesn't mean that they are completely, completely dry. So again, we wouldn't recommend to try to go put on skinny jeans right now um, or put on like really thick socks or anything, but she can definitely get in the car, get in her bag, put her seatbelt on, everything like that. And her nail polish is dry to the touch and it won't move. It's formulated with jojoba oil. So it's really hydrating. Anything that kind of falls off your nail and onto your hands, you can definitely just rub into your skin and around the nail bed um, like she's doing. And that will be a really hydrating um, formula for your hands. In our boxes, we also have our cuticle serum. If you do dry drops, it's not necessary that you do that on the same day. But cuticle serum, a fresh one, takes about 10 clicks to get started. And then it's two to three clicks per hand after that. And you just want to outline your nails two to three times a day with that. And it will prevent hangnails and really just provide a lot of hydration to typically a really dry part of your hand. Absolutely. Um, we also got a question about ridges in the middle of each nail. Will the buffing um, help? that? Ridges are hereditary um, and kind of something that none of us can really avoid because they will happen over time. Our polish is self-settling, so most people find after three to four coats of Olive and June polish, they can't see their ridges through the formula. Um, you don't want to overbuff ridges because the top part of it is actually the healthier part of the ridge um, and beneath it is a little more weak. So if you buff that away, you'll feel the sensitivity in your nail bed. You can gently buff, um, but we would recommend really just sticking with three to four coats of polish. Uh, if you need a ridge filler, Olive and June doesn't have one yet, um, but we do recommend using one if you can still see the ridges. And if you use EC as your color, do you still need a top coat? It's up to you. We would recommend it um, just because we recommend top coat um, with everything, but that's totally up to you. It'll keep it from um, chipping a little bit more, right? Because yeah. I've, I've heard from, from your lives that, you know, they're formulated to go together. So it's they are. Like the second part of the system. Exactly. Um, and do you use the dry drops between coats or just at the end? Just at the very end, since there is oil in it, you don't want to be painting over it. I'm also going to use hand serum, which is like a third level of moisture, which I love. Um, this is the best stuff ever. So I do one to two pumps per hand. And then you can rub it into your hands and your cuticles also. And it's so fast drying and like not sticky. This stuff is amazing. I also got a private question um, and I, I know the answer and I love the answer. So I'm uh, excited somebody asked this is who are Olive and June? How did the company get the name? Olive and June are um, our founder, Sarah Gibson Tuttle's grandmother's names. So that is what the company is named after. She, um, Sarah is very much involved in the business, um, goes live on our Instagram multiple times a week and is very available if you DM her um, to help with manis or petties anytime. So she's very invested. Absolutely. And all of the colors are also um, named after, um, you know, powerful women that, you know, she's come into contact with or is friends with. So that's really lovely yes. too. Um, and um, for pedicures, how do we manage hard calluses? At some salons, they use a gel and it removes it. Um, so do you have anything, you know, to help with that? Our petty system has a foot file um, that we recommend using once a week very gently. And it also has a foot serum that we recommend applying in the morning and at night. Um, you don't want to get rid of calluses. They're there to make walking a lot more comfortable. So if you over buff that and get rid of it and have like really baby soft feet, it can be kind of painful um, for a couple days. So you don't want to completely remove them, but our system has everything that you need to just kind of keep overall petty care and health. 
Absolutely. And can you explain why there's no Olive and June base coat? The base coat is formulated in the polish. So it's just a two-step process, polish and top coat. Um, you don't need a base coat unless you feel like your nails really stain when you do brighter or darker colors. And in that case, then you would just use our EC polish as your base. Absolutely. Um, if I wear polish too long, especially on toenails, my nails get these white splotches after removing the polish. Why does this happen and how can I prevent it? So nail polish on your toes lasts a really long time because um, it's not coming into contact with anything. You do want to change it out every couple of weeks um, just because your nails need time to kind of reset, but also you need to push your cuticles back. You really need to kind of pay attention to the health of your nails versus just their appearance. So when we allow polish to kind of lock onto our nails for too long, it's not getting any air. Um, we're not caring for it. We're not pushing cuticles back. It's growing. There's just stuff happening underneath the surface. So that's why we recommend either a weekly or bi-weekly cadence of both your manis and your petties. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and uh, someone said, beautiful. You make it look so easy. And when she that does. <laughs> uh, Batya said, thank you for this. It was amazing to do this live coming from someone who was diligent about getting mayonnaise prior to COVID. And I have been using Olive and June since the pandemic started. So that's perfect. That's all I that makes us so happy to hear. I was also um, such a salon girl before and me too. Converted. Yep. Absolutely. Um, we yeah. have tons of education on our site. If you have further questions, lots of saved videos and tutorials on our Instagram as well. Um, and we're obviously always available through email or DM private message. If you have questions about any of the tools or you want to review any of the steps, that's what we're here for. And does Olive and June ship internationally? We ship to Canada, but we don't ship anywhere else internationally yet yet. <laughs> Amazing. Um, well, thank you both so, so thank much you. for sharing your expertise with us and the whole team at Olive and June for their gift of a free polish for each of our callers. Please take a moment um, to fill out the brief evaluation survey that is linked in the chat box now. Evaluations really do inform our future programming, so thank you so much for um, that. And we'd love for you to stay connected with Star Share it via social media, where we post about events like these, program updates, and fun ways to get involved. And I especially want to mention it because right now we are running an amazing Hanukkah giveaway campaign on both Facebook and Instagram, where we are giving away amazing items for every night of Hanukkah, including an Olive and June manicure system. So if you felt like that was, you know, out of your price range and you just did the free polish and now you just watched this and you're like, wait, I need all those tools, go ahead. Even though that was a few nights ago for Hanukkah, you can enter any night of Hanukkah as many nights as you'd like, as many times as you'd like. Um, just make sure to follow all the instructions because there are some little things like saving the post and filling out a form. Um, so just make sure to read the entire caption so that you follow all the directions so that you can enter. Um, you have until December 22nd to enter as many times as you'd like, and that is when winners will be announced. I also want to thank our sponsor for today's webinar, the Siegman and Edith Blumenthal Memorial Fund. Please never forget that Share Share It is here for you and your loved ones during this time. We provide emotional support, mental health counseling, and other programs designed to help you navigate through the cancer experience. Everything we do is free, completely private, one-on-one, -on -one, and our number is 866-474-2774. You can also email us at clinicalstaff at charshares.org. Our social workers and genetic counselor are available for every single one of you. You are our priority, so please never hesitate to reach out. We're all going to get through this together. Finally, I wanna let you know that we have several exciting webinars on a range of topics planned over the next few months. We have our Sharshare It National Book Club on January 7th, where we'll be talking about the book, Beat Breast Cancer Like a Boss, moderated by Ali Rogan and in conversation with Joan London and Jill Kargman. And on January 12th, we'll be talking about cancer brain fog, sometimes called chemo brain, but it really isn't about chemo. So come learn more about that and how um, to cope with it. And please check out our website regularly to see what topics are coming up. You can also access the recordings and transcripts of all past webinars on our website. Thank you again, Aviva and Hannah. This was Thank so you. wonderful and honestly a dream come true for me. <laughs>
Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, all of you. All of you. Bye. Bye.